Back at the range, in probably about the weirdest environment I've ever shot a crossbow. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I am back with the lockdown longbow, some arrows and some waders. I'm gonna show you why I'm in the waders. Look at this. What you can see behind me is my range. That's where I usually do my shooting. Basically my field floods, not always, but this year it's decided to flood. Now, one, that is a real pain in the butt. Two, fantastic opportunity to play with arrows and water again. So when we were doing the, the film in the swimming pool that I did in the summer, obviously, I had very limited distance that I could shoot over and I really, really didn't want to hit my pool. So one of the questions that was absolutely thrown out there with the, with the swim pool film was how far does the arrow go through the water before it's effectively spent, before it basically isn't going to do any damage to anything. I can try that here. I don't want to lose my arrows, that's going to hamper me a bit, but let's see what happens. Here I am, back at the range, in probably about the weirdest environment I've ever shot a crossbow. Here you go, middle of a lake. 10, 12 metres away is a sheet of OSB, 12 mil. Uh, half inch strand board, I think you call it over in the US. It's like a really low grade building sheet material. But basically if these bolts go into it, then I'm gonna take that as enough that it's gonna hurt somebody. We have meter markers coming back towards this way. I'm gonna get down and shoot as low as I can. So let's just do one and just see what happens. Hopefully I'm not gonna lose my bolts. And now I've gotta work out how to uh, try and load this thing. All right, here it goes. There goes the table. Uh, here we go, shot number one. That went in at the five meter mark. I didn't hear it hit the board. Uh, so it's probably down in the ground somewhere. I'm going to try and rake it out in a bit. So I'm going to have to try and get myself a bit higher. So we'll aim maybe for about three metre mark. That hit the board and it went in at the two meter mark. Didn't sound like it was very loud. So I'm just gonna sort of come back maybe for about the three meter again. I'll try, it's all a little bit awkward, it must be said. That went in about the two and a half meter mark. Again, I didn't hear it hit the board, but you know, it might just be angles of incidence hitting the ground first. It's just very difficult because the water's not that deep. Let's have a look. Okay, I have no idea what happened here. The first arrow went in at about the four meter mark. I, it just obviously just hit the deck straight away. I don't know if it's a function of the water turning it. The next two, this one was a bit short of the board. A uh, meter short, a little less, um, and it hit the deck, but it, obviously it's traveled uh, a couple of meters, two, three meters. Not very in the ground, it must be said. This one struck the board. That struck the board. But, you know, it just wasn't in. Uh, basically, it had just about enough energy to prick your skin, probably not a lot more. We're just gonna run it again. This time I'm gonna get as low down as I possibly can. I thought I was last time, but I'm gonna try and go more. Uh, we'll just go again.
That went in at the three and a half meter mark. I did not hear it hit the target. Two and a half meters. Again, I didn't hear it strike the target. Went in about the two meter mark and it did strike the target. Okay, best for last. Let's see how in this is. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, one centimetre, half an inch into the OSB. Now clearly there is one more test that has to happen. Nothing to do with the lockdown longbow. I've got some modern bolts. I've got a crossbow. I've got a lake. Does this thing shoot underwater? I've got no idea. My guess is not really, but let's find out. So we're going to shoot one in the air at that uh, 12 mil OSB and we're going to shoot one underwater and we're just going to see the difference. I'm going to do it really close because I am expecting with drag and everything else for this to make really quite an impact on it. So I'm just going to shoot from a meter distance about. All right, so let's give it a go. First up about one meter into the board. Correction, through the board. Gonna try it underwater. <clears throat> same bow, same distance, underwater. <laughs> Great noise. <laughs> Well, and that was your answer. It was just floating here. Didn't even make the board. So yeah, basically the drag of the water on these limbs, so slow, it was just got nowhere. And then the drag of the water on the bolt, slow moving bolt, just meant there was nothing left in it. Crossbows underwater, absolutely don't work by a harpoon gun. Here I am back at base to conclude another pointless, or informative video, depends on your point of view. I think a little bit of both really. But what it did say to me is, if I got my numbers right when I was viewing, and it might be a little bit different when we see it on screen, but at about a meter and a half distance, very low angle of incidence of the water, obviously that might make a difference, more testing required, but at about a meter and a half distance where it struck the water and then went into the board, there was virtually nothing left in the arrow. And it would pinprick you a little bit, might be a little bit unpleasant as people said if you are actually swimming in a moat um, then you know disease might get you but essentially the arrow is not going to be the thing that does for you the last thing do crossbows work underwater in any meaningful sense absolutely not and that is presumably exactly why harpoon guns exist but also the fletchings these are big fletchings on these arrows and that is going to cause a lot of drag overall the whole thing just not really geared up for going underwater but if you're close to the surface you'll be in trouble if you're deep down it's not going to be a problem for you by the look of it anyway thank you very much for watching another lockdown longbow film and there will be more coming because there's so many things like mail and plate that i just have simply not looked at i'm going to come back i'm going to look at the sharpness of arrowheads as well because that all feeds in there's a good reason for doing that anyway Thank you very much for your comments. It's just fantastic, the support you give and the interest and the films you generate out of them. Thank you.